Hi, this is Wendell, and welcome to this version of Techie Topics. In this Techie Topic, we're going to talk about host routing, but from the perspective of data link layer encapsulation. A fascinating topic, I'm sure you'll agree. Anyway, let's review host routing logic first. A host has an IP address and a mask, of course, and it has a default gateway setting, most likely. And we're going to assume that it does for this discussion. Now, armed with those pieces of information, a host takes that IP address and mask and calculates the range of addresses in a subnet. And once it knows that information, the range of addresses in its own subnet, it has two-part routing logic. He will either say the destination IP address is in the same subnet, and if so, the host can send the packet locally. In other words, not use the default gateway. But if the destination is in a different subnet, then use the gateway and let the gateway figure out how to route the packet. That's the basic logic. So keeping that in mind, let's think about what happens with encapsulation in this case. Host A is going to send a packet destined for host C in this case. So host A will build this IP packet and we'll represent it with this rectangle. And the destination IP address will be host C's IP address. And the source IP address will be host A's IP address. Simple enough. However, A can't send that IP packet across the LAN without putting something else around it. Host A has to put some data link header and trailer around it. In this case, an Ethernet header, as we see represented next. And in this case, it's going to have MAC addresses in the header. The source MAC will be A's MAC. And the destination will be R1's MAC, not host C's MAC. That's usually the thing that uh, surprises people. Now, why is it R1's MAC? Well, the Ethernet Frame's job is to deliver the packet from host A over to R1. And then when R1 gets the frame, he says, oh, hey, this is addressed to me. It's my MAC address as the destination MAC. But as part of the routing process, R1 strips off this Ethernet header, and he strips off the trailer that I didn't bother to draw. So there's no more Ethernet header and trailer to worry about, and that sits in memory in router R1. And then R1 makes a forwarding decision to forward the packet over to R2 next. So there's the packet going toward R2. And during that time, the packet has an HDLC header and trailer around it. Again, I didn't bother drawing the trailer, but that's what flows across this link over from R1 to R2, assuming the default data link protocol of HDLC is used. Now when R2 gets the packet, R2 likewise strips off the data link header and trailer and is left with this IP packet in memory. And R2 then needs to put a new data link header and trailer around it, in this case, Ethernet. Now R2 has a connected route that includes host C's IP address. So R2 says, hey, I don't need to send this to another router. I need to send it directly to host C. So this source Ethernet address is going to be R2's MAC and the destination will be C's MAC. That allows the LAN switches on the right to deliver this frame from R2 over to host C, where host C can de-encapsulate the data and process it. Notice that the entire trip, the destination IP address was host C's and the source IP address was host A's, but the data link header and trailers all changed using MAC addresses uh, local to each LAN when delivering the data.